Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel and today we are going to discuss my interview experience with Deloitte. I am going to share uh, uh, all the interview related things uh, which happened with me and how many rounds were there, what kind of questions were there and how you can prepare uh, if you have any upcoming interview with Deloitte. Uh, so let's get started. All right, so uh, there were around uh, three rounds, three uh, rounds plus one HR round, uh, which was mostly for the salary discussion and, and the uh, policy explanation and the expectation and all. So there were two hardcore technical rounds and one round was for the um, techno managerial kind of, uh, kind of uh, things. So if I talk about the first round, first round was hardcore technical round where they uh, basically asked me what I have worked till now and what are my strengths, what are my weaknesses and uh, where I'm more comfortable with, which clouds I have worked on and what are uh, the area which I am currently working on in my current project. So uh, this round was mostly about my strength and uh, uh, the things which I know. Uh, they were just trying to understand uh, whether I'm a good fit uh, for them or not and uh, whether I know all those things which I have mentioned in my resume or not. So you can uh, you can say that this was more like an is a screening round but then uh, it was a bit more than screening. They were they were actually asking for the for the uh, practical exposure. Uh, so it uh, it started uh, uh, very normally like uh, just give me your brief introduction and then it went uh, with the couple of technical questions uh, i normally start such kind of interview with my strength and try to explain everything in my in my brief introduction itself so i followed the same approach and i gave them hint about uh, what are my strength where i have uh, worked on and where I am currently working on so all those things and based on that uh, you know the next set of questions they uh, started asking uh, there were two interviewers but one was just a silent observer the other one was uh, basically asking questions uh, questions started uh, with LWC because I highlighted LWC a lot in my introduction so they started with my strength and ask a couple of questions on basics of LWC uh, why it is different from aura what are the main differences a uh, couple of uh, decorators why we use them what is the advantage of using them why what is the need of lwc if we already have aura uh, what is uh, uh, basic lwc kind of questions you can say but then they asked me to write something on the lwc so they asked me to open my notepad and share the screen uh, then they asked me to write something it was it was easy it was like uh, uh, let's say you have got a list of uh, list of an object and you need to iterate it and display uh, that list in the in the UI so how you're going to do that how conditional rendering works and how you loop through the list and how you loop through the map so they just wanted to know if I know the basics and all or not uh, it was good. It was good and then they asked me a couple of other uh, cloud related questions whether I have worked on sales cloud or not, whether I have worked on service cloud or not. So those were kind of touch point questions and uh, and mostly related to Apex. Then they came to the batch Apex and they started asking me a couple of conditions and couple of questions related to statefulness of a batch and how you can handle the error error mechanism on the batch and uh, how you can call you know different different other apex related things from a batch whether you can call a future method or not whether you can call a batch another batch from a batch or not so those basic questions they started asking uh, I think uh, yeah and then they also ask a couple of questions on, on the administration side mostly on the on the sharing setting uh, and the OWD uh, there was uh, questions on the role hierarchy and other things so basically uh, these questions were mostly on the practical side of it they uh, will mostly give you the examples and real-time scenarios and you need to understand that scenario and need to un you know explain your answers accordingly uh, so it was it was an easy round not that easy but I mean it was fine it was just touching my basics and not a lot of cross questioning uh, was happening in this round and everything went well 
uh, then there was second round which was taken by a senior architect and it was it was a hardcore technical round where uh, he was not not touching the basic questions uh, but he was uh, you know going to the next level and started asking me about the trigger frameworks and platform events and uh, change data capture and all uh, so it was it was an advanced uh, round you can say and then he asked me to uh, write something on the lightning message services as well so uh, even the questions on lwc were not basic uh, they were advanced level of questions and uh, he was he was more into the you know practical things he started giving me a couple of scenarios on the visual uh, visual flow as well and uh, now what kind of things i can do in the process automations uh, there were not a lot of theory questions to be frank all the, all the questions were from the uh, from the real time scenarios and he was just trying to understand whether i have actually uh, exposure to those real time things or not uh, yeah i think second round was not that tough but uh, he was asking the advanced questions and at the end he also asked me about the data structure and algorithm uh, whether I know the dynamic programming or the other uh, other searching and sorting sorting algorithms, uh, I was not very comfortable with them, but I knew the basics of it, so I explained them what I knew. Uh, he asked me to, you know, I think uh, sort the list and then uh, display them in the reverse order or something. A couple of basic questions from them. Uh, of course, you cannot use the sort and other inbuilt methods, so you need to have the basic idea about the searching and sort, sorting algorithms as well. Uh, but uh, if you are not comfortable with them, there is no harm in saying that, okay, uh, you are not very comfortable with such kind of questions, but it is always good, you know, if you give it a try and at least start writing uh, something uh, because uh, a straight no is always going to harm you. So this was it, uh, this round was good and uh, the third round was techno managerial round uh, the guy was also an architect uh, I, I think he was a delivery manager but uh, uh, he was asking questions on high level whether which project i am currently working on what kind of clients i have served and uh, what are the domains i have worked on and uh, uh, how much i know the things in ui whether i know angular or jquery or not uh, whether i know the javascript uh, and at what level I am at in JavaScript. So these kind of were the questions they were asking. Uh, and uh, this round was also good. I mean, uh, not not very much in the technical front, but yes, the guy was aware. So if you ask in terms of tech, in, in you know, technical terms, he'll be able to understand those things. Uh, don't try to, you know, fool the interviewer if you feel that he's just a manager, he's not aware about the technical thing. Never do that because, uh, you know, all the delivery, ma delivery managers and uh, senior person uh, in the project are also from the technical background and you cannot fool them. So I think this was the third round and final round. Uh, after that, you will uh get a call from hr i think these two the first two rounds were uh, happened on the same day but the third round uh, i think a day or uh, two days later but uh, the final round you can see the sld discussion round was three four days later uh, but you will get a confirmation from your hr whether you have cleared those rounds or not so uh, that was the interview experience questions were tough uh, uh, because because they were they were practical questions actually they were real time scenarios they were not asking you know theory related questions or theories or they were not interested in the theories uh, they were asking the uh, practical questions and uh, see in every interview you will get a chance to ask questions <coughs> sorry uh, so at the end most of the time they'll ask whether you have any questions or not uh, make sure you do put uh, questions if you have any because that uh, you know gives them a clear idea about you and uh, what you're looking for uh, from the organization you are gi giving interview so um, be flexible and <clears throat> definitely try to ask something so let's say if you are on the first round or second round where you are going through a technical discussions you can ask about the kind of projects they have and uh, the kind of projects in their pipeline how you know project allocation works and uh, what is expectation from uh, from a developer of your experience something like that uh, let's say if a delivery manager is taking your interview you can always try to ask the questions related to uh, 
project how delivery works and how uh, you know which domain they are mostly in what kind of cloud they are working on and what is there in pipeline for them uh, as a company so do try to ask questions in in these interviews because that gives you an edge and always remember if you have worked on uh, let's say uh, have worked on FSL or CPQ marketing cloud or any any of these things I call them add-ons because uh, they add a lot of thing uh, if you just say them uh, if you just if you have them you if you have worked on those things uh, there is no harm in saying that you have worked on that because that gives you an edge over other candidates and uh, for interview it will be just a tick point that okay this guy has worked on CPQ but uh, for you it will give you a huge edge over other candidates uh, so uh, the, I can I can I can make a detailed video on this uh, related to what kind of questions they were actually asking you know in practical sense uh, do let me know in the comment box if you want me to upload the detailed video but overall on high level these were the rounds I have gone through in Deloitte and uh, I was able to crack everything I was able to get the offer letter as well so i wish you all a good luck and uh, feel free to talk to me in case you have any uh, upcoming interview uh, and if you if you you know find this useful and uh, you can you can always talk to me you can send me an email and you can connect me via other social network networking platform as well all right so i think that's it for today i am going to upload a couple of other videos on other topics but uh, this is uh, it for my interview experience with Deloitte. Thank you everyone. Bye.